to order. First on the agenda uh, is the library trustees on the revised solar agreement. Come on up. Hello. How are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Good. You know, Rebecca, I also, we have Sharon Curtis Phelan and Kim Boyd, who are new trustees, so I wanted to introduce you to them. Jeff Landers McDougall is also here. Yeah, full She's house today, for, huh? Yeah, we have, everybody's, everybody's showing up. Um, we're hoping that tonight will just be quick. We just want to, um, we do have the revised information uh, James has provided to us. There was a uh, extension that he was asked for. It was granted, but it's, uh, well, I believe it's a minimal extension. And James, you can come up and join us if you'd like. Um, so what we'd like to do to move the process along, we thought that us reviewing it and you reviewing it after we, re it just, it's like playing that telephone game that kids play. So we want to know if we could request that the chairman of the library trustees and the chairman of the board of selectmen get together with James so everybody can work out any, any issues that both boards might have and then we can then bring them back to our respective boards to see what they think about it, but it just seemed that it was going to delay the project if we do all of our review and due diligence, then bring it back for you guys to do yours and then get it back to us. That would just make more sense um, if we could have the chairman of the board of selectmen and the chairman of the library trustees um, get together with James and try and move this along. So we were requesting that of this board and then we can go from there. So hopefully we can then hash out anything. We do have, um, we have given some of the new information. James and Rebecca have all made um, copies of them for you. We also have for you to review in conjunction with that if you want. We did, um, uh, you brought up some of the previous town, so we did get Nottingham's lease agreement and we have copies of that so you can compare it to, to what we've gotten. I made a copy of that for you in case you were interested in that. Because um, I know those are some of the questions you had before, whether or not we had lease agreements from other towns. So Rebecca did get Nottingham, so they sent us the whole thing. Um, and again, not to do that this evening and take up your time, but to just request that the chairman get together with our chairman and, and work it out with James and get a date that's good for everybody and go from there. We didn't know if that seemed reasonable to you guys and I would thought we bring it up. So, you want to sit down with James as, as me as the chair and you're the chair, right? Yep. Okay. And then what, bring it back to your committee? Yeah, and you bring it back to yours. But rather than do it 12 different times, let's, let's get something we all agree with and then bring it back to our respective boards for comment, discussion, see where we can go from there. But. Um, made no sense to me for us to review of our all our comments and issues and then bring it back to you get more go keep going back to James let's just put three people in a room and try and see where we go from there and then we can bring it back to our boards and see what they think and I think from um, James Hasselbeck revision energy from our perspective um, the only time sensitive piece of this project it's really not the solar piece but is it's the state grant and they did as you know offered an extension so thank you for that support but they put some strings on it uh, meaning the project needs to be constructed by the end of uh, end of july um, has to be constructed constructed and built so when i talked to my construction team i said okay we need this thing up and running by the end of July. When do you need a thumbs up or thumbs down? And they said, you know, early May. Um, so that is, you know, we can do some of that stuff at risk. We don't need a full contract signed by that point. Or, you know, some significant assurances from. By the middle, by what, May 15th? Is that what? I mean, early, as, as early as possible. Yeah. You know, because um, we have to get the utility local uh, the utility process will take about a month and a half and we want to get that done prior to starting construction is typically best practices so that is the only urgency on our end um, if the 
rebate value is not important. You know, revision is still interested in this project, but it will negatively impact the economics, obviously, if we, we lose that state money. Okay. So that's why we wanted to work all those details, get, you know, what are the, what are the roadblocks? How do we get rid of the roadblocks if we can? And try and move that along to do it faster, if possible. All right. Well, what do you guys want to I'd do? make that in the form of a motion that we have the chairman uh, meet the chairman to uh, and report back to us. Second. Okay. Discussions. Um, well, I guess we. I mean, I, I'm, I'm willing to do that. Um, and then I guess, I, are, are we going to, does the board want to express what we're looking for up front, or do you, uh, you know, so in negotiations, we, I, we got an idea, I mean, we can talk about that in non-public anyways, but um, to actually enter into negotiations with him, um, or how do you, how do you, how's the board comfortable with that? I guess, I mean, I still have a couple questions as far as I'd like to compare up to Unitil and where our costs have been and what the projected cost is. Because what I'm looking at in front of me is you're going to install it and in year six we'll pay $71,000 that in 34 more years will make $184, $184,000, okay? And that is guaranteeing a 2% increase in our electric costs every year of those 40 years. Whereas I'd like to look at the consumer index of where electric costs have been, because to me, it seems a lot to pay in year six, 71,000, so that 40 years later, we see a net savings of 184,000. We don't have to pay that in year six. That's an option. That, that's a choice. That, that is correct. But um, we're still paying a 2% increase on our electric costs every year for 40 years. We're, that's what we're locking in. And correct. I'd like to see where the average cost has been for Unitil. Sure. Um, you will see that the average cost is, on the aggregate, greater than a 2% increase. It goes up and down. Uh, yeah, no, year, I understand. It's a year, tough so, it, so it, it, you know. use um, the higher that upward uh, trajectory is and and frankly you you are correct I mean the economics of this specific project are they are there it does provide savings to the town over time but you know as we've discussed in previous meetings over the past two years you yeah. know the, these are small challenging projects yeah. um, so it, it provides predictability and some savings but it is economic yeah. boom. I, I, I'm still interested in the solar aspect on the net metering scene. It did pass, I believe. Not quite. where the real money's at, to be honest with you. As I, I think I've stated clearly in the past, the goals yeah. so if, if we're talking about a large-scale landfill real meaningful financial savings to the entire town and then that is something we would love to explore with you when we get the net metering cap raised um, but that is a that is a power plant yeah. what we're talking about at the library is a small oh physical demonstration of how, you know, solar electricity works. Just earlier today, um, I was at Bakey School, my daughter's in kindergarten there. I did a solar energy presentation because they're doing like community cares folks this week at class. And it's like, you know, I'm sitting there with my model and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to the solar. Just go across tonight. the street and show yeah. Road 
library project aside from the economics that the landfill project could not provide due to the higher voltages systems that's not really a safe place so uh, no we I, should look at them together but and that the goals of those two projects are very different because part of the library goals obviously is also a community and children educational, educational tool, tool yeah. where someone could come to look at the solar plant panels we're going to have monitors in the library that's showing their output so people can learn about it children can learn about it the community can you're not going to allow people if the larger project goes through to wander around no, I, and see yeah. all the stuff so it, it's it's two part for the library versus maybe a singular goal for the for the town and um, um i believe that james has documentation about the the that gives the answer to the questions you're asking so i don't think that's anything he has to recreate i think nope. we've we've had it ourselves so we can make sure you get that quickly any other discussion okay all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed I'll, I'll abstain and okay. Mark, offline, can I just contact you, get a list of dates from James, some from you, and then we'll find a date that works for everybody? Does that work for you? That, that's fine. Okay, great. Oh, Wait, and um, if we, have one, we can take one more minute, hey. we're going to have our li li library director, Rebecca, um, do a little, you know, ad for the library. I, I wanted to share with you uh, how the library is participating with the 325th. Uh, celebration so uh, we're gonna kick off we have this pamphlet I'll give one of these to everyone uh, on May 1st we're gonna have uh, Dana Jennings who grew up in Kingston he's an author he is gonna be here for the day on May 1st and then uh, we're gonna do a one community one read so that's a synopsis we're inviting everyone to the library to that event on May 1st and it should be Great event. So, okay. give this to you. And Thank can you. we leave some of these in the town hall downstairs? So? Yeah, Perfect. can we? Uh, Thank you very much. Put it on the bullet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay, and I've got the one that you gave me electronically okay. as well. Thank you very much. One of your one of your hands, those. Seven thirty is going to be our next appointment. In addition to the agenda, is Rich yeah. is Rich coming in? What's that? No. Ernie, I get you on the list here about the, the concrete work at Nichols Memorial? Okay. Um, what's that? Okay. We don't we don't think he may be in? What's that? I believe we Okay, well, it's not a specific time. I just, we have uh, yeah. residents from Sign Roads coming in at 7.30, so I was trying to conduct some business prior to them coming, I guess. Okay. Uh, how about the minutes? We might as well take care of those. I'll make a motion to approve the um, minutes of April 8th, both public and non-public. 
second. Who, who made that motion? I did. You weren't here. I can make the motion. You can? Yeah. I'll second that. Uh, the confidential have one little tiny mistake. On the second page, it shows Kevin is voting yes and he wasn't here. Okay. The only other thing I saw on the on the non-public was uh, uh, let me see which one did you see? Which other page? Confidential. Okay. Yeah. What's that? Where did I have that? On um, on the attendance. Oh, seconded. Y yeah. On right the roll call. Okay. Oh, and this one is also, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you had absent on the f yeah, one. So you didn't. Yeah. Cut and paste. Um, on the uh, on page two, the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, it says a bond needs to be in place for for the road before any permits. It actually needs to be constructed. Okay. And the top coat, a bond for that would need to be in place. You can put that in the letter, which I'm just reprinting because I've got orange corn on it. Okay. <laughs> um, On the, um, the public minutes, page two, um, it's uh, it was a little. What they were talking about was. Now I'm looking about the story, but that's the original to sign for the. Okay. On page two of the public. Two, three, the fourth paragraph down says Selectman Coombs asked if anyone had looked into bollard cupboards that look like granite. <clears throat> he said this is a sleeve to go over the PVC post. I believe the PVC is pressure treated and they were going to put a P, the post is pressure treated and they were going to put a PVC sleeve over that. And Phil was talking about. A, uh, it's also, I think, a, a PVC sleeve to go over that pressure-treated post that looks like granite. Okay. So the post itself is, is pressure-treated right. with a PVC cover. Okay. That was the only thing. Anybody have anything else on that? No. Okay, we got a motion in a second to accept the minutes with those uh, adjustments. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? I'll abstain. signature folder we have there's a uh, solar exemption pass that around they installed a panel on it uh, we have a special event permit So I didn't know if we get signatures tonight. It's something that happens every year, though. Okay. It's all the same. All right. It's, it's um, for the fifteenth day of April. Coming up pretty soon. <laughs> An adult and youth triathlon. Uh, the the I, evidently the uh, it will be held on June thirtieth. Main location of the event will be 67 Ball Road, which is the camp extending along Ball Road, Danville Road, 
Route 121A, Route 107, Church Street, Rock Remen Road for the bike route and along 1st Street, Great Pond Road, Ball Road, and Acorn Drive for the foot race. The event will involve 250 to 300 participants. Um, they've had that in the past, Chief. Yes. Have you had any issues with it? No. Not. So you'd, you'd be in favor of? Yes. June 30th. Oh. I did hear that um, Stonyfield yogurt wasn't going to come back for. They're not coming back. Yeah. They found out they were looking for, a, I think, a larger location. Okay. We have a excavation permit for Henry Torromeo on Door Road. What are they excavating? What's that? What are they excavating? Uh, I assume it's, it's stone product, so I assume it's to continue with the quarry. He's got marked down stone there, printed in the front. Had a complaint down there two weeks ago on dust on the road. You were, uh, you went out to take a look at, I see a note here from Susan, um, took a look at uh, John and Truck and auto? We did. I walked the site. And everything seemed to be okay? Yeah, fine. Where are we at with them in the whole dumpster thing? Uh, still waiting to hear from us. I thought we said we were okay with well, it. Well, we've got to go to the planning board and and you can't put the, the dumpsters out front now because the building's being rebuilt to caught on fire. That's the issue. So he's got to wait for that to get built so we can go back. All right, so it's kind of on hiatus the until his building's built. Yeah, until because he's got to get that other trailer out of there before he can move the the containers out there. Okay. So we're waiting for that to get done. Then we've got to go to the planning board to see where they'll allow us to put the uh, maybe that's something Phil can bring forward. Where they'll allow us to put the uh, the dumpsters to put white goods in, batteries, tires, and white goods. So, yeah, I guess. I just need more information on it. Okay. The memo of understanding uh, between Rockingham Planning and Kingston. The note we had last that was on here last week was we were waiting for additional information. Yeah, I thought we all were you yeah. into that. Or? Um, what I gotta. I got a phone call this week from a guy, Cad, who does his own little co-op buy-in. He was questioning us on it. When I read the contract, if you look at it, it says that, that um, under costs, Rockingham and Planning Commission will pick up the costs incurred by their staff, um, Hill Energy Service, and their attorney to look over it. It does say any additional cost, expense, or liability to any party caused or arising out of this agreement, its implementation, amendment, or expansion shall be borne by each party. I just want to see what other costs it would be because I can't imagine it being any other costs. If they're going out to bid, and so I want to see, they want an MOU signed. What's, if they come back to us and say, well, this is going to be the cost of electricity, and we say, well, it's cheaper what we have now. Why would we sign it? Or this guy, Tad, who reached out to me, he's going to give me a price. So I, I guess my question would be um, if the cost seemed not to, cost seemed to be prohibitive, you know, what's our escape clause from signing it? I know they want it for the end of April to be signed, so we still have yeah, some time. Yeah, 26th, so if you want to wait till next week and... Well, can you reach out to them, Susan, and ask them, you know, just tell them we had some concerns about costs. Um, I'll reach out to them. What, 
I'll reach out and follow up with them. I was gone this week and we just got it. I, I, I read through it and that's what I highlighted was the question on costs. Okay. Was that was that your only concern in the Yeah. Area? Did anyone else have anything? It seemed fairly innocuous to me. It, it did. It, it was a question of cost. But this guy, like I said, he reached out to Susan and she spent a lot of time talking to this fine individual. And he called Cindy today too. Yeah, and so he's pulling out electric costs, and he's going to give he's going to give me a price as well. Okay. So. So this is a replacement for this, right? I believe yes. Okay, this was the you received your noting temporary kind of saying. on the other pages. Okay, did, did everybody get a copy of the uh, letter for Mr. English? Okay, they weren't in the packets? No, I think they went okay. but it didn't get down the road. Does it you want to pass those? Okay. Um, on that. Take a look at those. Don, did you get a copy of that? Yes. What's that? Might want to, if you're going to discuss it, maybe in non public. I don't know. Okay. Sure. We have. An appointment, a request for an appointment to a budget committee member. Do we want to have them come in? Yes. For Anne Marie Roth, could you invite her in? So we'll just we'll discuss this. Um, I mean, I don't know that that qualifies for. Um, yeah, I don't know either. It's what do you think? Say that again. Do you have any issue with discussing this in public? No, I don't think it has to be. It's a straight out letter. Okay, yeah. I don't know how you feel. Okay. <clears throat> Did everybody get a chance to read the letter? Yeah. Okay, the only thing I would add that, I, I mean, where it sits now, um, there's homes occupied down there that never had the, the boundaries installed. So that, that needs to be done before we allow them to do anything down there. Um, I mean, it should have been done prior to closing on the properties and us issuing a final occupancy. But the, it definitely needs to be done now. Now that the weather's better, I mean, that's something that, that they should be moving on. Um, <clears throat> so you want me to add that in along with the bonding of the road, the boundaries need to be installed for existing I don't know how many yeah, well that's that I mean that's supposed to be done once the, when they rough in the road then they're supposed to set the bounds okay. I mean obviously they don't do it uh, while they're still constructing it but when, when all the swales and that stuff's completed there's no reason that they can't set the bounds okay so they should be done in the road that it's already existing Absolutely. They, that should have been done a while ago. And on whatever new road they rough in, they have to do the bounds first. So 
Should I say that too? Yeah, all the, all the bounds for the, the first phase of the project need to be installed before they can do anything on, this, well, on shouldn't the Shouldn't all of them be installed? On the second stage, what? Shouldn't all of them be installed? All of them have to be installed. Well, they all need, but when you do the second stage, they, they don't have to install them right off during construction of the road. But the other ones should have been installed prior to uh, any of those. So are we just setting the precedent that basically moving forward before a foundation permit will be issued? The bounds for that property have to be installed. Well, it's really not a pr it's not a precedent. What it says in the ordinance is that the the road needs to be built to the sub sub level. A bond needs to be in place, and part of that building that road, the monuments are installed. So it's it's really not something new. It's just something that wasn't done. Okay, I just want to make sure we're covering that. So if that's going forward before yeah. any more foundation permits are issued, the bounds will be in for that piece of property any properties that that's where it should be before any permits are issued and then i guess looking at this the intent of it is giving him this two options he has right that's what it's saying he either can either need in order to put the road in he has to basically issue stock phase two Uh, the house possibly built at 8 Lafayette Drive does not have two feet in front of it. It has been identified as part of the phase two of the subdivision. Construction of this house was begun with no building permits aside from the foundation permit. None will be issued until the road is bonded and roughed to finish. So he either needs to finish the cul de sac, which he'll have the problem with eight, or he needs to apply for phase two, which means set a bond in. <clears throat> um, I, I think that lot he's talking about is not the original lot that was in phase one. It mm. was it was changed yeah. to be in phase two. Correct. So if you only wanted to go through phase one, I, I would assume he would have to change, reconfigure the lot to meet the phase one um, cul de sac. I don't it, think he can just go back and install on an the site plan. plan. So. so you're kind of right there. The site plan, the second site plan for phase two, has already been recorded, I believe. I believe the mylar was signed and recorded. So that would have to be somehow nullified to go back to the first phase with a cul-de-sac. And the lot re lots reconfigured. Um, the only thing that's holding them up from going forward is posting the bond and, and all those other little steps that need to happen. I agree with you, Mark. B bounds and all those kinds of things—things things that weren't done on the first phase that should have. But then just follow procedures for for, for subdivision. I think it's a the next well, phase is a six-lot subdivision. I mean, according to. Our And the remaining work for the you know the top coat of the road is bonded. Exactly. Okay, so yeah, it's sure. it's not he can't just put up a bond no. and not build the road. No. Nope. Yeah. That's what to do the rest of it, the second phase, post the bond and then follow all the steps that a regular subdivision needs to happen. Subgrade, inspections, you know, then start building the road, build the road usually through the binder. Right. And then you bond the additional work, and after that bond is in place, you can issue building permits for the rest of the lots right. on that subdivision. Okay. But I'm just saying that the cul-de-sac really isn't an option anymore. Because okay. phase two was, right. it's, it's now the plan. So. Well, that's what I'm kind of saying. He, yeah. The, the house lot, I mean the building eight, is what messes everything up. Yeah, because that was completely different. From what it is now versus phase correct. one, so correct. I can't just go back to it. But if I'm correct, I mean, help me out in this climate. I'm sure he could find someone that would be willing to take on and finish the phase two and just go through with it. Correct? That's not really our problem. It's his land. I mean, I don't know where they are financially. 
That's, yeah. that's a business decision they need to make. Okay, so I, I, I guess I don't really see it giving him two options. Do, is that how you read yeah, it? Yeah, I guess it. I guess it's, well, he has to do, well, it, no, he has to move, either move forward with phase two is the next step, unless he does something with that house, right? Theoretically. Uh, well, he can't do anything with the house. He has to continue with phase two. He could remove the house and, and stay with phase one. Uh, th there would be a process to do that because you've got to sign my lot recorded at Rockingham County with all new lot configurations. So uh, somehow okay. that I don't know. I don't know. Don't know the legal precedents how you undo that work. To go back Probably to have to come one. in for a whole new site plan. I would imagine it, it'd be an amend. They would. He would have to amend the site plan yeah. to revert basically to phase one. And so. Is everybody comfortable with the letter? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do you want it to be revised to add in something about the bounds or no? Uh, yeah, I think we, uh, he should be made aware of that deficiency and that, that needs to be done really before anything else. I think that could just be a simple sentence as please keep in mind the bound the monument markers that have not been installed as per town ordinances and we'd be looking for those to be finished as well. Seven, is it 7.30 or 8 o'clock? 7.30. 7.30 is times. Can you identify yourself for the record? Yes, uh, my name is Lindsay Pulowski. You, you need to be like six inches from the mic, so just <laughs> My name is Lindsay Pulowski. Um, I'm here today to request- where, where do you live? Oh, on 16 Symes Road. Thank you. Um, I'm here today to request that the three dirt roads, Symes Road, Circuit Drive, and Bass Lane be paved. On these three short roads, there are 53 tax paying properties and 43 homes. On a daily basis, there are about 78 cars, trucks, and vans being driven on a daily basis, which is a lot of wear and tear for a road that's only about 2,200 feet. Um, as you can see on the pictures on page one, which I apologize, there's a mislabeling of one of the roads, um, the road conditions are pretty bad. There are constantly potholes. Um, and these two weeks after the roads were regraded, which can only happen you know, six or so times a year. Um, so this spring, the roads were so bad that my sedan almost got stuck in the mud on the way home. Um, I have a neighbor who is a newborn. I was honestly worried about her safety in terms of being able to come and go in case of an emergency or just you know needing to run out for diapers. Um, so this spring, I was kind of prompted to want to do something about the roads, so I called Rich and I talked to your admin who both um, indicated that it might be helpful to start a petition with the neighbors to see kind of who's in favor of getting the roads done. Um, so that what, that's what brings me here today. Um, my husband, uh, Steve, my son, Max, who I apologize has been very disruptive tonight. Um, and I spent the past few weekends talking to our neighbors, probably about 15 hours in total, going from door to door to see who's in favor. And we were met with overwhelmingly kind of positive support. Our neighbors really want to have this done. 
Um, and we heard a lot of stories in terms of why they want it done. We heard a story um, from many years ago that the roads were so bad at one point that an ambulance couldn't get down the road and the neighbor ended up passing away. Um, we heard a story about a neighbor's son who miss and that summer he wasn't able to use them on the roads because they're dirt so he kind of cried about it and was pretty pretty devastated um, I have another neighbor who had to replace replace the struts in her car two times in three years because of the potholes um, so overall you know just a lot of stories about people being unhappy with the roads for a variety of reason um, including heavy dust people don't want to open their windows in the spring and summer um, because the air gets thick with dust because of the constant traffic on these roads. Um, on pages two to five, we have about 39 signatures from our neighbors who support the roads being paved. And on that last page, we have a map that represents those in favor or, or those who we weren't able to contact, um, who we've heard are in favor. Um, overall, we see there being for why the road sh should be done. Um, the first being the town's resources. So having to constantly regrade the roads is a drain on the town. It's a drain on our time and the town's money. Um, it's constantly pulling rich away from other projects um, and other road maintenance, which has a negative impact on the entire community. Um, the second reason is health. Um, there's a near constant cloud of dust over the roads, drifting into our homes, filling our shoes and covering our cars. Dust like this exasperates allergies and asthma. Activities like bike riding, walking with a stroller, going for a run, or taking the dogs for a walk becomes a chore when there are constant deep holes to contend with. Um, next, vehicle wear and tear. The dust is a constant drain, um, causing wear and tear in our cars and our homes. Um, having to drive over large and deep potholes on a daily basis is bad for our vehicles, as well as the town's first responder vehicles, plows, etc. We heard um, actually just this weekend that one of the town's new fire trucks actually had a rear view mirror get hit on one of the trees because the roads are so narrow. Um, again, it's a story from a neighbor. I don't know that it's true, but. Um, I think that maybe has been an issue down there. And, yes. And I think a lot of the neighbors have been reluctant to give the town authority to remove those trees to yeah. make the roads. Now, I see everybody on here except I gotta ask, who, who's, who's lot 34 and who's lot 66? So 34 and 66, unfortunately, I don't know them by name offhand. I could look that up for you. Um, but neither of those um, lots. Is there a reason they didn't want to sign the petition? Yes, so lot 34, they were worried about speeding. Um, we have heard that people drive pretty fast on circuit. Um, they said that they would be willing to sign or give up easement if there's if there were like speed bumps or something like that. Um, but they were just worried about people getting into a collision or something. And then lot 66 didn't want to give up um, land, basically. Okay. Um, it's, I, I, I think maybe you could speak to it a little bit, Rich. I, I know that roads in the past has been a challenge primarily because there was, wasn't there a fair amount of trees that needed to come down? And I think some were taken down, weren't they? Right, or, right. Where, where um, do you stand on that? So I asked, actually, Lindsay, I thank you, Lindsay, for coming in. Um, I asked her to do this petition yeah. and come before the board and get this started, this process started. Um, so I'd much rather do this than deal with the Facebook stuff that's, you know, yeah. ridiculous that I don't respond to. Um, this is constructive. And I encourage it. Um, the road is a mess. It is a... She's right before I came, the first year I came up. So many warm spells where I actually had mud in January. Yeah and mud in February, which you never used to, you've never seen that. I've never seen that in 33 years, but there are
constructor talking with Lindsay I said I'm I would like to see five feet of land given up it's only and in that 20 feet if there's a tree that's technically in the right it's still Looks like all the landowners might be willing to do that and and I hope Almost everyone said, take what you need, we want the roads. And, and that's a great thing. Been through this before with, with your neighbors. I'm sure some of the older, long time residents can tell you. Uh, we've actually spent. We have. Uh, about stakes in the road so you can barely make it down the, the road without hitting your car in the stakes so I mean part of the process conversation between myself and the board what's the minimum standards going to be are we going to pay with a road two cars can pass each other at least 16 feet probably 18 feet of pay. what's the Eight. standard now 24 the town standard for a new road is that will never work in Symes Road. I'm not even beginning to recommend that. If we, but you get, have 20 feet now. We have 20 feet now. If you went full width, you'd be taking people's front so porches off. If you went at 20 feet and paved 20 feet, and then two and a half feet of soft shoulders, what you, is that? I wouldn't go even 20, I'd go eight. If we can get 18 feet of pavement and then have some. Three feet on each side? Well, I mean, you gotta have room for snow. Yeah. And you gotta have room. Sure. Cause what, uh, you gotta have room to do something with the water. That and runs off the- Two cars pass, pass now or no? No. no. If Just two car, one car is going out, another car is coming in. Someone's got to find a hole yeah. to drive into like, to pass. Yeah, you back into a driveway, or you. Lindsay is right. We actually did have a fire truck. I think they ripped more than the mirrors off. I think oh, they really? ripped the ladder off. I, I don't think that's the first time down there. No, no, it's a, it's happened. It's it's yeah. it's real tight. I mean, so, I, I can't get my big trucks down there with a wing on for sure. Would you be comfortable with an 18 foot road? I, I absolutely would. We can build a 14 or 16 foot road, but that means it's just a one way road and you still got, you know, 16, 14 to 16. Well, I mean, the road. one way. That's what it is now. Well, what if you make bass one way? Like circuit coming in, bass going out. Does that do anything to alleviate the overall? No, because you still got the. No, you still got a portion. Looks like signs road's quite a bit narrower. They're all 20 foot wide, right, right? I believe they're all 20 foot, 20 foot wide right away. Well, I mean, I think this is a great tool. I think maybe a lot of work's been done. So, Absolutely. you know, with the people, you need to cut trees or, or we need to take five feet of property or whatever. We can say, hey, I hear you want your road wide. Yep. This is what we need to do to accomplish. To you know, this is what we would need to accomplish that. And I would even—I don't know how you feel, Rich, but if we, in, I would—I agree. It kind of has to be all or nothing. But at the very least, if if everyone at Symes Road wants to do it, you want to do Symes Road, great. And then if everyone wants to do it on, you know, Bass Lane, and then if, if the pavement stops there, that's where it stops. So the one person that's concerned about, you know, speed, they absolutely have a point. Once you put Well, I, I mean, you, know, you have that on every road, Rich. Absolutely. I, I it's mean, pretty, you know, and that's, we, we don't, we don't keep the speed down by not paving the road. Yeah, we don't put on the, yeah. we can't, I, it, I mean, it's a pretty small road. I mean, how, how if someone's going to speed, they got to speed. Yeah. I, I it's like it. 
you have to basically drag race and make an active effort to speed, which unfortunately yeah. we've heard happens, but it's kind of hard to believe. Yeah, we can't, I wouldn't recommend putting a speed bump. So everything, I'd love to fix this. We need some, need, need to do some work with all the residents. There definitely needs to be trees cut in there. We can come up with a minimum standard that we're willing to provide. Don't need to make that decision tonight. Um, what, what did the survey show? Because yeah, we spent some money on this before, Absolutely. Right? Yep. I'm, it showed encroachment on, it showed every tree on it that needs to be cut that's in the town right away. And, I, you know, I can't imagine doing this project without at least maintaining the 20-foot wide right away that the existing right away that we have no absolutely if they if they're in the right away we, we, we need, should be cutting the trees i need permission to cut the trees or, or but there's a process and if i cut them and the person is not happy then they have the right to go to court and seek damages against the town i'm not willing to do that Someone's going to sign a piece of paper saying, yeah, you can cut those seven trees on my property line. Unless you guys order me otherwise, and then I'll do it, because it's not on could me, we, it's on you. I guess, could we start with tagging the trees, and then someone yep. go back and follow up with the people and say, you okay with that tree coming down? Yep, I can do that. Tie a yellow ribbon around them, and then uh, start. And then the we'll progress. deal with those that say no, and then figure out the next step? Yep. Thank you for your homework. So, yeah, of course. Let me would, know I what I can do to help for down. next steps. That's cool. Hold on. One question. Yeah. Um, do you have money for this? This, honestly, I don't see this getting construction season. Yeah. By the time we get everyone to agree, we might get the trees down and get the thing stumped. And then, realistically, it should settle for a season anyways and pay it next year. But the road is going to get better. I've already, we've already got all the material screened and ready to go on that road. We just finished up, uh, well, actually, they just finished up today. So there's going to be some construction work happening. It's the same thing we do every spring. Clean up the shoulders, get rid of the leaves that people rake out in the road, um, the plow debris, scarify it, reshape it, haul in a bunch of wrap. Uh, crushed hot top, and I've got a real good material because we things that came off of Main Street that pilots in the fairgrounds that we heard about last year. Yeah, they'll be happy. That's a lot of it's going on on those dirt roads, and it's a much superior percent asphalt product. Now, are you able to incorporate it as the base coat or a base layer? Or do you yeah, have when we because uh, it's all it's all sandy gravel there. Um, so once we cut the trees and stump it and establish the width, you'll take the existing base and turn it all in and mix it together and then add more material and, and pave it. So it's not, we're not wasting material or wasting time. We're giving them a, a better product for the rest of the summer. And hopefully, you know, the, the, the big problem is when it's, it's the speed of the cars and if we don't get a bright break with the weather like we haven't had for the last two months, every time we grade it, the next day it's pouring rain and, you know, you've got mud again. And then the potholes are back. And then every rainstorm after that, the potholes keep coming back. Um, it's just the dynamics of a dirt road. Um, but I would love to get this thing head up, headache off. A lot of maintenance, yeah. Yeah, it is. Sure. Absolutely. Fine. I'd recommend we get a release before we cut any of the trees. Make, yeah. them, make them sign up. Yeah, we're going to have to try to we'll identify them. Uh, so because we've had it surveyed, we got a good idea where the, the right of way is. Yep. Identify them. And then, like you said, we, we can have a discussion on, on how much room we think we need. Mm -hmm. If we need 25 feet, and th then we could have the discussion about people giving up five feet okay um, permission to talk to some of the cowmen and make sure I've got the right paperwork here for people to sign for releases because they're gonna probably have to sign a release um, to cut the trees just to cover our butts That's good. absolutely cover yeah. my butt yeah. <laughs>
Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks for coming in. Do you know how to cut down trees? When you see it, when you when you see your Where? neighbors, just tell them that the town will be getting in touch with them, yeah. and the project can only move forward provided they they're cooperative and they they allow us to do what really needs to be done to make it safe for everybody. I have so many neighbors who are going to be so excited. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Ernie, you want to jump up on the next one with Rich? Well, before I get to that, uh, this is this is uh, on our agenda for each person for public comment. Anybody interested in making public comment at this time? Hearing none. Okay, we, you're on the agenda to discuss uh, concrete work at Nichols uh, mu Museum. So earlier this year, we signed a uh, contract with uh, SFC Engineering uh, to design to, to write some specs so we can bid out the work at the old Nichols Library, the Nichols Museum. Um, some questions have come back at me from SFC I, I, it's a historic building I just want to get some input I didn't want to answer them on my own uh, during the course of discovery we found we actually did some sample of the mortar, the mortar between rich, um, color to it it not like it looks today which makes sense because you had the red, red uh, slate roof and the, the mortar was tinted a red. So the question is from SFC, is that what you want or do you want to go with matching color for the existing, what's there now? How long have you been in town? Huh? How long have you been in town? I don't ever, I, I've been in town all my life, 61 years. I don't remember being red. Never being red, okay. So my, my recommendation, I just, I've got again, this public meeting, get it out there. Um, recommend that we go gray. Number one, it's gonna be much cheaper because if you go with the red, you're probably gonna have to wanna repoint the whole building, which is cost prohibitive. So my recommendation is we go with the gray we're only going to knock out the mortar that when you do a sounding on it, you know that it's, it's, it's not doing anything, just sitting there. And one of these days, it's just going to fall out. So we're actually going to go around and chip the loose mortar away and replace it. Uh, there's been a chemical analysis. It doesn't matter what color we put. Like material going in there whether it's gray or red. So my recommendation, we go with, with gray. Any issues with that? I need to hear it. So, uh, so why is it gray? The pigments washed out of it? Or? No, uh, because when you go, when you can actually find some of the old red, very limited on the outside of the building, still showing, but everything on the inside is that, got that reddish hue to it. Um, the And that's when it happened. Okay. They probably did almost the whole building with this. Uh, and then the rest of it has, over the years, call it photo degrading. I don't know what, what the proper term is, but it's, it's okay. flushed out of it. So how does everybody feel about the gray? No. We're not doing, uh, we're not trying to go back to the way it was 140 years ago. We're trying to fix it. We're structurally sound to match what's there now. Yep. I think it's a proper way to go. Everybody comfortable with that? Right. Okay. We might want to just head up, I would say, the Historic Commission and let them know what we're doing. Or actually, you're on it, right? Well, I need an answer for tomorrow. So if someone, someone's got a big beef, they better be calling me tomorrow because th this, this phone calls as we If can't. you remember it being gray as old as you are, then I'm good, with, I'm good with the gray. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're older than me, but I'm... Then... You're, you're probably right. Uh, there's a decorative 
we don't even need to talk about that. That's, that's a done deal. Uh, the next question that they had for us, we've, there's a chimney on the end of the building. There needs to be some extensive work, put it back in shape. So the question is, is it all right to put the top? No matter what you do, because right now you've got some cracks up there and you've got water migrating down the inside of the chimney, it's affecting the firebox, it's, a, it's, it's affecting the whole thing. No matter what you do, it's going to be a maintenance problem for years forever. Suggestion is that we put a solid cap over the top of it and make the chimney not usable. Okay. I can't ever remember fire being lit there, but mm -hmm. again, nor, nor do I think we should allow a fire to be lit in that old building. And there isn't a, the furnace isn't tied in, the flue of the furnace, furnace isn't tied in? You know, you're right. Furnace goes. That was, that was dumb. But that you, may you, you, you can probably put a liner in it. Yep. And then cap it. I think you will have a carbon monoxide. Put a liner from dumb. the boiler out and then <laughs> seal the chimney. I hate being dumb. <laughs> Let me come back to you with a, with a better... Uh, that could be bad for the we'll, patrons. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, how many ambulances? Yeah. That's it. No. Well, actually, I would say to you, Rich, though, if you're going to go back and do that, take a look what's the different... Well, I don't know if you want to add a galvanized pipe off the back of it either. No. I was going to say if you redid they that. Make, but they make a liner just for that. Stainless steel liner. Stainless steel so you can block the chimney off completely. Yeah. You know, after that, you won't have any water coming down. There's two flues. One, one for the fireplace and one that goes down to the basement. It was for the old coal furnace that was down there, but we've tied into it for the, for the boiler that's there. And sorry for being dumb. steel liner and then seal in the rest of the chimney you get a lot going on we'll let it slide <laughs> who else is up Bill, um, I think you only got the building folks I got something I like to talk about okay last thing on the agenda I've had some phone calls and questions um, obviously I've lost a lot of weight uh, Mark, why don't you fill people in? Why don't you fill people in? Okay. Um, I, I'm going to do this on Rich's behalf. He's asked me to speak to the public. Uh, he's been a long time road agent uh, who unfortunately is experiencing some significant health issues at this time. Um, that's why he's he's lost a substantial amount of weight recently. Um, look good, though. He's, I look good though. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> it's unfortunate that it had to come to that to lose weight. I, I'm I'm better. I'm I better. got the same problem. I'm I'm better, Mark. So it happens. Um, pancreatic cancer's got me. Um, I've known about it for about a month now, had the symptoms for about three months. We're in a program to fight it. I'm going to do the best job. Well, Rich has uh, the board's complete support. Um, he needs to do whatever he can to fight this. And uh, if there's anything we can do for him, we're, we're here for him. Uh, he's done a great job for the town, and we look forward to him continuing in that capacity. Thanks. Thanks, Rich. Ernie, did you have anything? Um, the only other thing is that uh, the archaeologist is going to be at the recreation center tomorrow. He's going to be there tomorrow? Good. And I coordinate that with Rich. And, and how call. long is he going to be there? I, was, I, I wasn't here last week. So. How long do you anticipate him being here? Well, it's only eight hours. Probably, it's probably five hours, yeah. 
Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, Bill, you here to see? Am I missing something? Back page. On the back page. Oh, they were going to be, they're non public, that's why they're last. Okay. Just a big seat. Did you do everything else that you need to do? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, the carnival is the only carnival camp. Is the only Give us one minute. You okay. Um, can you give us an update on the... Uh... I can. So I spoke with... Uh, I spoke with uh, Mr. White, who uh, is one of the managers of Lone Tree. He originally thought it would be no problem. Uh, his latest text to me today was it was unclear about the five big trailers and he's going to check with one other person and get back to us. Okay, so we're continuing to look into uh, a new location uh, for the Celebration the to house the uh, trailers for about a week for the uh, right. carnival workers. Uh, originally, it was we had a, a meeting on it for Magnuson Field. There was some objection. We're, we're trying to find an alternative uh, location, and Don will be following up on that. Uh, and hopefully, we'll be able to come up with a alternative. All right. Does anybody have anything else? Public session. Okay. That uh, we make a motion to go in non-public. Ninety-one A. 